the deltoid muscle. The deltoid covers most of the shoulder joint and is composed of three heads or divisions. The anterior head, the lateral head, and the posterior head. This muscle is active during any movement that requires the raising of the arm. It becomes increasingly more active as the arm is raised higher and is especially active in the range of motion above 90 degrees. Let's look at the landmarks for the anterior and lateral deltoids. First we have the glenohumeral joint and the humerus. The origin of the lateral head of the deltoid is on the acromion process of the scapula and the origin of the anterior head of the deltoid is on the lateral clavicle. They both insert on the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. Let's look at some of the attributes for the anterior and lateral deltoids. Contraction of the anterior head of the deltoid flexes the arm forward at the shoulder joint, whereas contraction of the lateral head raises the arm to the side, abduction. Some synergistic muscles include for flexion, we have the pectoralis major, and for abduction, the supraspinatus. And antagonistic muscles for the deltoid, for flexion, the antagonistic muscle is the latissimus dorsi, and for abduction, the pec major and the latissimus dorsi. Now let's take a look at the posterior deltoid landmarks. We have the scapula, the humerus, and the glenohumeral joint. The origin of the posterior deltoid is on the spine of the scapula and the insertion again on the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. Contraction of the posterior deltoid produces extension of the humerus at the shoulder. The synergistic muscle for the posterior deltoid is the latissimus dorsi during extension and the antagonistic muscle for the posterior deltoid includes the anterior delt and the pectoralis major. Let's take a look at the clinical findings for the deltoid trigger points. Clients with active trigger points in the deltoid muscle may complain of pain in the anterior, lateral, and posterior shoulder regions. And they may also say that the pain is experienced primarily when they move their shoulder. They're usually unable to raise their arm more than 90 degrees. And they also complain of a painful catch in their shoulder joint when they raise their arm to about 15 degrees. Some activating factors for trigger points in the deltoid include impact trauma, such as the recoil of a rifle on the shoulder, deep sea fishing, holding a power tool at shoulder height, and intramuscular injection as with a booster shot or flu shot. The referred pain from the infraspinatus trigger points can activate trigger points in the deltoid muscle. Clients with deltoid trigger points are commonly misdiagnosed as rotator cuff tears, glenohumeral arthritis, subdeltoid bursitis, C5 radiculopathy, and a strain or separation of the AC joint.